the quote of South African leader, the late Nelson Mandela, that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. We may not change the world here, but for parents in Papua New Guinea, early learning for their children is the next best thing apart from loving them to death. Bukblong Pikinini, an NGO group, says over 80% of what children learn is between the ages of two to six. So it's right to get them to read early. I talked to the founder of Bukblong Pikinini and Sophie Herman and the executive officer, Lucinda Kisip. Thank you, Lucinda Kisip and, and, and Sophie Herman. Thank you for coming on to the program, PNG tonight, ladies. Thank you very much for having us. Okay. Thank you for having us. Good. Book Blow Pikinini. Book for the kids. Book Blow Pikinini. Nice topic. Tell me about it. Tell me its history. Tell me where it is right now. Yes, Book Belong Pikinini is um, a story of love. I think it's yes. a lot of people who have come together to help the children of Papua New Guinea um, become avid readers, um, have the opportunities that every child should have you know, in every country, the opportunity of a great education that leads to a long life um, with um, healthy opportunities for employment, for, you know, leisure and for just being an active citizen of this country and able to contribute. Yeah. Book Belong Pikinini um, was started in 2007. Um, I was the wife of Australia's High Commissioner to Papua New Guinea and had the opportunity to um, try to just help you know, reach the most vulnerable children in the communities with something which is valuable and something that they could enjoy. I found that, um, that there were no um, real public libraries as I saw them in my native, native country of Denmark and as I saw them in Australia. My daughter was two years old and was already reading like a little bookworm and when her friends would come to play, they would come and sit next to me and really enjoy the books. And once we had no more books left, I said, let's go to the public library. And they said, there aren't any. And I just went into shock and I thought, we cannot have this, so we okay. have to do something about that. Okay. And then, as I said, thanks to my husband's role, I was able to have um, very good networks to be able to communicate the desire to create those valuable learning opportunities okay. for the children. Yeah. But your and time so here, began the story. Yeah, you'll be, Your time here ended, but you are still there, you're continuing it. Tell me about that. That's true. So... I am from Denmark and we are all about quality mm -hmm. over quantity. So in my country, when you start something, you got to finish it. And I believe that there is so much to be done still on literacy in Papua New Guinea. So thanks to our corporate partners, thanks to the Australian government, we've been able to build 17 libraries across Papua New Guinea. All right. And thanks to the support, which extends to companies even our governments as far as Switzerland have supported us to create libraries for the children. Um, we are working now both with PNG companies, with Australian companies and with international companies. And so I have never really left PNG because in Australia I'm very fortunate to have the support of His Excellency Charles Lapani, who is the our, PNG our, our High, High Commissioner, Commissioner in, in to Canberra. Australia. Yes. So they've given me an office there. So an office. An office, wow. and we have five volunteers there who help us pack all the books that we send to Papua New Guinea. So we send large amounts of books to PNG right. every month. In, in Australia, where do you get the books? Are they donated to you? They are, are they all donated, you? and I am a very strong believer in the fact that if you have to turn you know, children on to reading, you have to inspire them. You have to give them something they want to read about. And so we don't take old smelly books, you know, we want new beautiful books that can inspire the kids. So we get books from publishing houses, they're very generous publishing houses, Oxford University Press, Hachette, Macmillan, everyone is supporting us. But we also get um, school children to say we want to support Australia's closest neighbour okay. by giving some of our books. So if they've only been in one family, the children still have 200 each, you know, they can easily share their books and okay. they do in great numbers. So how do you get them up here? I mean, books are heavy. Cost books are heavy and it's, it's a very big, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a big process, but it's true. But, you know, we've been extremely fortunate in Book Belong Pikinini in that companies that work in, in PNG have seen the need that there are in the community. So they come behind us with, with their support. 
We have the support of uh, CFAST, which is an Australia PNG company. Okay. They ship the books to PNG. Then we have the wonderful support from Express Freight Management. They custom clear and handle it. Then we have the fantastic support from Hastings Steering, which has provided us with our storage facilities and the list goes on. Okay. So this is how we are able with all the donors and sponsors that we have to get the libraries out to five provinces of Papua New Guinea and, yes, yes. and get it to, to the children who need and it And the, the support most. you get, is it monetary sometimes? Sometimes it's financial, like from the Australian government and from some donors who just say like, Bank of South Pacific have said, you know, we would like you to establish libraries in these provinces. Here's the money. So sometimes it's financial, sometimes in, in kind, mm -hmm. but every Kina counts. Yeah. Every Kina is valued and we appreciate, you know, all the support that we've had to be able to establish not only our 17 libraries, but also now the most beautiful literacy program you can imagine. Um, which are turning these little Papua New Guineans into readers within one year okay. just with us. Um, also a book donations program and a publishing program. So we're also now publishing books with PNG faces in them. <laughs> okay. Now, um, the kinds of books, all right, Papua New Guinea children are perhaps not uh, uh, like your child, if, if you like, they, uh, they don't speak English, they, uh, not as their first language anyway. So it's a little bit hard for them to start. So I'm just wondering whether these books are chosen specifically for PNG uh, culture situations and conditions? So we don't always get books that are, you know, fully fitted to the cultural situation, no. which is why we want to produce our own books and which is why we've also held an author seminar in 2014 okay. to try to get Papua New Guineans writing because you know better than anyone that PNG is not short of stories. No, that will. You know, you have the most beautiful and amazing stories to That's tell, true. but every child, every child loves a book. You know, they might not start out by fully understanding the story, but they understand the pictures. And we also work very closely with amazing Australian authors who have the gift of telling a story. And so the children just become enthralled, you know, yes. by that story. Okay. Um, but we want to have more PNG stories, and we are going to be publishing one during Literacy Week this year, which we are extremely proud of, okay. uh, which was through the, the Crocodile Prize Initiative. And we've had um, the award winning entries being published and um, written by a Papua New Guinean young woman and illustrated by a very talented um, PNG artist. So we're very much looking forward to that. Okay.